Namaste. I feel deeply honored and privileged to be invited to participate in this Lokarpana or function celebrating the release of five volumes of Sri Dharampalji's Sahitya, his works. And uh, I think that this is like a Gyan Yagya for me. So I'm uh, offering my own Ahuti. I want to speak a little bit about Dharampalji, whom I was privileged to know, uh, and then talk about the importance of his work, his books, uh, as well as this new edition of his work. Uh, first of all, I think congratulations are in order to both Dr. Bajaj and Dr. M.D. Srinivas for this painstaking and meticulous editorial, should I say feat, a great achievement indeed. The wonderful thing about Dharampalji's works is that they were always in print somewhere. I first read The Beautiful Tree in a Biblia Impex edition long, long ago when I was a PhD student uh, in the US. And subsequently, other India press, Claude Alvarez, did the complete works. I have that set. And now yet another uh, series has come out, a new edition, which checks all the original sources of Dharampalji. So this is a great editorial and intellectual achievement. I want to congratulate the editors. And I think that this series is going to uh, help us refocus on the things that are really important to us. Now, let me reminisce a little bit about Dharampalji. First of all, I must confess that I did not actually know him as well as many of you who are present today or who have participated in this program. I came to know him in the late 80s. As I mentioned, I had returned from the US with a PhD. And one of my abiding interests and concerns was to understand the Swa in the Swaraj that we were all trying to, should I say, not just politically, but intellectually, culturally, philosophically, spiritually, uh, not just, uh, 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 you know, ascertain and understand, but also establish. So this project of trying to establish Swaraj was a kind of lifelong passion for me. And one of the people whom I knew I had to meet was Dharampalji. I had made it uh, one of my uh, goals to meet him on returning. And I was fortunate that Dr. Krishnan in Bengaluru, if I remember, he was teaching sociology at Manasa Gangotri campus of Bengaluru University in those days. He introduced me to Dharampalji. And we met after that in Chennai, in Bangaluru. Uh, and especially when he used to come to Delhi, he stayed in Sarvodaya Enclave with an old friend. And I used to teach in IIT Delhi in the 90s. So we would meet whenever he came to Delhi. He also used to have meetings in the Gandhi uh, Peace Foundation. And later I met him in Vardha also, when he was practically in isolation. He hardly spoke at all in those days. But the one thing I wanted to underscore about my own experience of Dharampalji was that he was very reticent. Uh, modest is not just the word, uh, the right word. He was uh, extremely, uh, in my uh, opinion, indrawn and introspective by nature. And it would take a while uh, to draw him out. And uh, whenever he spoke, he spoke little, uh, except in, in, in a certain kind of company, then he would open up. But what he said made a, a deep impact on me. For example, he said, quoting Gandhiji once to me, that the, that the modern Western civilization is a seven-day wonder. I mean, I was interested in Hint Swaraj's working on it. And he told me that there have been many great civilizations which have been, uh, you know, destroyed in the past so and have risen to great heights which we do not fully understand. And he said that uh, it's, not, it's not a given. It is, it is not uh, an incontrovertible truth that the modern Western so-called universal civilization will last forever. And we are seeing the cracks of this civilization already, uh, technologically in terms of the uh, economic and energy crisis, corona, several other things. So he said it's very important for us to understand ourselves and uh, put out our own institutions, our own uh, literature, thought, writing, uh, and uh, create society in terms of our own deepest manas and chintan, about which he wrote 
a wonderful long essay, Bharatiya Manas and Chintan. So he said the, the effort should be to understand that. Then another project that I was interested in, he he encouraged me to understand inter-Asian relations, that we have to recover the acumeny, you know, the world that existed before Western civilization took over the rest of the world, so to speak, what Janet Abu Legod called, uh, you know, that world of uh, the Indian Ocean uh, littoral countries before Western hegemony. And this was important because after Western hegemony also, we will have to reconstruct our world. But so Dharampalji, uh, one of the things that I, I learned from him very deeply uh, was uh, to understand that it's not only the westernized, anglicized elites who understand or who have any special monopoly of knowledge on India, but that the folk traditions, Lok Dhara, uh, was very, very strong in India. And we had to actually made, make an effort to decondition ourselves so that we're open to this whole world, this whole way of living and thinking. Now, I wanted to uh, say a couple of things about uh, his methodology, which I think is really crucial. Uh, as far as I can tell, Dharampalji studied the Western archive in a very meticulous and independent way. He was an independent scholar of great repute. So that independence was something I learned to cultivate from him. You should not be a statist intellectual. You should not be an intellectual who is always hankering for a ticket abroad and aligning with NGOs or foreign embassies. Nor should you be an intellectual completely uh, consumed by your ideological orientation. So I learned from him to be open and to talk to everybody, anybody and everybody who is deeply interested in India, our way of life and thinking. Is, is worth speaking to. So that openness and that critical and questioning mentality. So he looked at the Western archive to understand the West. Now, for me, that's that's very important. Others have also done it. Even the subalterns, Ranjit Guha, also did that. But looking carefully at the West's own records of how it colonized the rest of the world, you know, reveals an immense amount of uh, information about just how cruel uh, they were and how much lacking in compassion and fellow feeling for the people they rule. Now, this is the greatest tragedy of Western civilization. Of course, there was much to learn from them. And we debated about that, that our recovery of our swa, ourself, uh, in that process, they played a catalytic role. That is my impression and my feeling, my considered understanding of the colonial process, whereas Dharampalji deferred, uh, I think, in that respect somewhat. Anyhow, but what I'm trying to say is we should extend this methodology of understanding ourselves, uh, to, to, you know, to, to the Islamic period as well, because we have not been able fully to grasp exactly how Indian civilization was impacted in those 600, 700 years uh, of Islamic dominance too. Can we learn from Dharampalji's methodology to understand that period? So that's one thing. The second thing I wanted to say was that uh, it's very important not just to speak as we do in India quite a lot. There are wonderful people who came to the inauguration uh, of the, uh, you know, the Vimochan, the, the public uh, release function of his books, who have spoken a great deal. But they also should write because Dharampalji teaches us this, that in today's world, it's important to leave a written record uh, so that future generations can engage with your work. And this brings me to the last point, which is that it's very important that Dharampalji's work is read by another generation of Indian scholars, Indian and international scholars. And I think a group such as ours, uh, who's, in, who's interested in Dharampalji, mind you, I never joined the PPST. I was not a formal member of any group. Uh, I'm saying that Today, the, there is a need to reevaluate, rethink, re examine Dharampalji's work. And uh, at the Indian Institute of Advanced Study, Shimla, of which I happen to be the director, we would welcome uh, uh, an international conference to study Dharampalji's works one more time, especially in this new uh, series, in this new uh, edition of his work, which uh, Dr. 
uh, Jitendra Bajaj and Dr. M.D. Srinivas have published. My thanks to all of you, and I hope that this is the beginning of a dialogue which will go on throughout the centenary year, centenary celebrations of Dharampalji's work. Namaste.